Hey, I'm Alex. And I'm Brandon. And welcome to Living Electric. We're both content creators and electric vehicle enthusiasts. And through this podcast, we hope to share our experience with owning electric vehicles and help you join the electric life. Welcome everybody to episode 10 of the Living Electric podcast. Today we're going over some of the content we posted since our last episode and the bulk of the episode is going to be talking about the Ford Lightning reveal. Both Brandon and I kind of live streamed our live reaction to the reveal and it's it's probably one of the, the biggest vehicles of the past year that we've seen released and uh, definitely gotten the most press and definitely gotten gotten us the most excited. So We'll start off. Uh, Brandon actually got an excellent opportunity to interview uh, Giovanni Bertolini. Bertolino. <laughs> I probably said it wrong. Bertolino. Already, right? Yeah. Bertolino. Okay. <laughs> yep. So Bertolino. tell us about that interview. Yeah. NLX is a uh, electric vehicle charging solution company. Um, they do a lot with like smart energy solutions. And um, their PR team came across my YouTube channel and they thought they would be a good opportunity to one, send me a charging station to test but also to interview Giovanni, who's the head of e-mobility for the United States and Canada. Um, And it was something I was not anticipating, and it was honestly a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. Um, So we talked about EV charging innovations, the EV industry, uh, the F-150 Lightning, and um, I also asked him how he makes everyday electrifying, and his straight up <laughs> answer was, "I work in the industry." <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, "That's a good answer." When you're working yep. on chargers, definitely, definitely. Yeah, and their so, their premier product is the juice box charger, right? That's kind of their main product. Correct. Yeah. Yet they just came out with a new one. It's called the Juice Box 40, um, which stands for 40 amps. Okay. Uh, it's a smart charger, mm-hmm. and it has a lot of features that I think everyday drivers would love. Yeah, uh, to charge their vehicle with. Yeah, don't want to spoil yeah. everything. So if you want to see the full conversation, yes. go over to Brandon's <laughs> channel and watch that. Yeah. Yep, all all the nodding on my end. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, what about you, Alex? Have you come out with anything recently? Yeah. So on my end, I this video is like long time coming. I've spent like a ton of time trying to do research and do the math on everything, but I just released a video about how what kind of savings you can have by driving an electric vehicle and came to some interesting results because we talked about on the i can't remember what episode it was episode seven we talked about ev economics like can you actually save money by driving electric um kind of the main point i came to and main conclusion was the answer is generally yes but sometimes when you're comparing it to a very highly efficient hybrid vehicle Uh, Mm -hmm. Because some of these new hybrid vehicles get like 50 miles per gallon, which is like (laughs) really impressive. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. But I think the bottom line, the most like the more efficient your car is, the more money you're going to save. So obviously EVs are generally at the hot at the high end of that efficiency scale. But there's also some crossover with very high efficiency uh, ICE vehicles. So definitely like do the math for yourself and check out my video to kind of see what I looked into. But, uh, it's, it's very interesting seeing the, seeing the overlap there and seeing what kind of savings you can have by driving electric. Did you discover anything that like surprised you while you were doing your, your math? I think, I think the biggest surprise was, um, honestly, how, how efficient the ICE vehicles have gotten. Cause I haven't looked at purchasing one in the past, like three years or even like, yeah half decade honestly um because i was looking at buying an ev so it's it's very impressive how efficient they've gotten but also how much the fuel costs just add up over the years that's like the biggest conclusion i came to outside (laughs) of the efficiency side is fuel is ultimately going to make be the thing that makes your car expensive it's not it's not always going to be the upfront cost so sometimes it is better to spend a little bit more upfront and buy a more efficient vehicle than it is to to Mm -hmm. sacrifice upfront cost and like try to get a cheap vehicle definitely yeah especially with gas being almost three dollars a gallon here that was i i wish i mentioned (laughs) that in my video and i i neglected it but that's another part of it as well as gas is highly volatile it's gonna be adjusting all the time i mean if we even look back 10 years gas was getting up to four dollars a gallon yeah it dropped down real low again and now it's starting to go back up like it's it's constantly changing whereas electric is a lot more consistent you kind of can expect to like you kind of know what you're gonna pay every month driving an ev so exactly (laughs) well that's awesome i'm excited to you know look more into that yeah watch your video 
Um, j- just a side note, I haven't had a chance to watch your video yet. Oh, I, it's all good. <laughs> so, so I did, I did see your tweet about the uh, Camry hybrid and yeah. how that like kind of surprised you. Definitely. But um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to watch that. Cool. Did you want to talk about your ID4 video too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another video I came out with recently, I had another fantastic opportunity that just blows my mind. I'm getting all these opportunities <laughs> already. Uh, very humble about it. I had a chance to have a Volkswagen ID4 uh, first edition for an overnight test drive, and we did an overview video uh, where I highlighted the exterior, interior, fun features, and um, sadly, no driving impressions. Didn't get a chance. <laughs> Ran out of time. Yeah. Um, but the ID4 is a very impressive everyday electric vehicle. Mm-hmm. It's something I think will be very a very good option for people. Yeah. Yeah. That is hard trying to do everything with a car video i think i've realized like i I feel like tech youtubers have it easy because they have like a small little piece of tech that can shoot everything in their room and be good with like (laughs) reviewing cars or like doing videos on cars it's so hard to get everything in and like even an eight hour day so for sure i know yeah you can't park a car in your bedroom (laughs) or your office like yeah (laughs) one day no (laughs) maybe yeah, you never know. Cool. So our big topic today, which I think both of us and I think the, the internet and community at large are very excited yeah. about, the Ford Lightning is finally here. So Ford has been teasing an electrified version of the F-150 going back to over a year ago. I think they posted that teaser video of it yeah. pulling a yeah. train, like hauling a yeah, train I to think show they, off its I think they said like a million, a million pounds that yeah. prototype was pulling. Yeah, 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 it was literally a train full of gas F-150. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they've been teasing it for a while. Finally did the review la- or the reveal last Wednesday. Brandon and I actually live streamed it. So if you want to see our live reaction to it, that's on my channel. Um, but yeah, overall, just an impressive vehicle. What were your kind of initial thoughts of it or what's your what was your initial reaction? So the I think the the biggest reaction that I had was the price point yeah. that Ford is introducing the F one fifty Lightning at um, uh, sub forty thousand. I think it starts at like thirty nine seven. Mm-hmm. Um, don't quote me on that price. I, I think I'm a few dollars shy there. Um, but before federal tax credits and state incentives, it's just unbelievable that they could create a electric truck at that price point. But I I think another thing that impressed me so much is that at that price point, just how capable of a vehicle it is. Mm -hmm. It's a truck. It's just electric. Ford did a very good job with that. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't seen any pictures of it, like it legit looks like an F-150. Like they definitely Mm -hmm. didn't, they took some, some design liberties with things like the wheels are a little bit different. I'm assuming to be a little bit more efficient. It's got this light bar kind of across the front, which we just realized is like a non-standard option. <laughs> like that's something yeah. you have to upgrade to. And I think is on some of the more premium trims, but it's got that light bar and a couple other things look a little bit different, but overall, like it looks like a pickup truck. It's it's the Ford F-150, a lot of people know and love. So I think just for that reason alone, it's gonna appeal to a lot of consumers. Definitely. Yeah, and, and I can already attest to that. We have a lot of friends who are petrol heads. Like, they love mm-hmm. gas-powered vehicles who drive um, combustion versions of the F-150 who already said they're going to go get this yeah. once it's out. Like, they'll put reservations in for it. That's been very promising from the conversations I've had with people is they're, they're kind of falling to three camps, and I think the the EV skeptic camp is, like, shrinking faster every day. It's either Mm -hmm. you own an electric vehicle already or your next vehicle is going to be an electric. You're just waiting on the right one. And and I think uh, like a normal looking truck is what a lot of people were looking for in an EV. And it's it's finally here in the in the lightning. Definitely. So was there any features with the lightning that like, well, I don't want to say shocked you. I feel like that's a bad (laughs) pun, but (laughs) surprised you. (laughs) (laughs) Darn. <laughs> I kind of have, uh, I do have a dad joke in mind, but okay, it's good, not good. original. I've heard people say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Is there uh, anything that surprised you? Yeah, definitely the biggest thing that shocked me was the, the onboard, uh, onboard inverter to power whatever you want to, as well as vehicle to home capabilities. So it's got an onboard inverter that uses the truck's battery to charge whatever thing you need to or run power tools or whatever 
out of the frunk, the cabin, and the the rear bed. It's got outlets in all of those, and it can handle up to 9.6 kilowatts, which is which is pretty high end. I was talking to some people oh, yeah. that have like solar and they have backup batteries at their house, and those generally top out or, at around five kilowatts. So mm-hmm. like. Yeah. It's definitely able to push some current and handle like everything your home needs to to oh, run yeah. whatever you need to. Yeah, yeah that that number blew my mind. Yeah, <laughs> compared to what's currently on the market. <laughs> yeah, and and the way that's gonna work, so they're gonna they partnered with Sunrun, I believe, which is like oh, they actually yeah. install solar systems for people, um, but they have this Ford Charge Station Pro that will they'll help you install with the purchase price or with sorry with the purchase of the vehicle i believe it's it's probably going to be an additional charge to install that um but then you'll connect that to a transfer switch at your house that will allow it to flip on if you do lose power for some reason or you just want to use backup battery so that that just blows my mind (laughs) (laughs) i know it's it's definitely a feature i think a lot of people have been wanting from an ev like that kind mm -hmm. of that kind of utility and i'm and i'm glad they brought it to a vehicle like this what about you brandon anything else anything that shocked you or what was your like favorite feature can can i can i say it sure yeah the (laughs) (laughs) the mega power frunk um (laughs) insert guitar country music no um i i will say the thing that blew my mind was the the mega power frunk is what ford is calling it it's a 14.1 cubic liter uh front trunk i think i got those numbers correct um but it's it's a powered frunk and it's massive you can you know uh, I think it has like a 400 pound payload just yeah, up front, just up front, which is, in- <laughs> which is insane. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're hauling golf clubs or pound, you know, things of mulch, dry cement, or, yeah. <laughs> mulch, your Costco runs, <laughs> um, you'll have plenty of options. Um, but I, I think my favorite thing about that is that um, you can use it for like tailgating or like out- outdoor parties because of the outlets. Um yeah, that's what and I said uh, during the uh, during our reaction. I said this is going to be like the ultimate tailgate machine because yeah, <laughs> you'll yeah, be able to run everything true. out of yep. the truck. Basically, you won't need to bring like a backup generator. No, no, seriously. Yeah, it's going it's going to be amazing. Um, I just pictured like all the Cleveland Browns games. <laughs> oh man, with people with their frunks open, like yeah. <laughs> tailgating, trying to forget how bad the Cleveland Browns are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I, honestly, I feel like the frunk is probably one of my favorite things. But um, I, I think the one thing I do want to mention is just like the the towing capability. Yeah. Um, you know, the nice thing with electric vehicles is that you get that instant torque right off the line. And the the one thing that I think attracted a lot of consumers to like diesel powered vehicles is that you get a lot of torque at like low revs. Mm-hmm. Um, but with this offering 10,000 pounds of maximum towing capability, there's no reason to, to get a diesel truck anymore. Yeah. Like it's, it's going to, I think it's going to eat up a lot of Ford's current lineup with the F-150. I think that's going to be a big sell. And I've been telling a lot of people this of the total cost of ownership and operating costs of an EV are so much less. That's going to be their big sell for fleet customers because mm-hmm. that's where they sell a majority of their F-150s. It's not to regular consumers like us. They mention it briefly in the reveal, but they didn't they didn't harp on it because I'm assuming not a lot of like fleet customers are watching that reveal. Um, so um, I think that's definitely how they're going to sell them. They're going to say, hey, this this vehicle has X amount of range. It's only going to cost this much versus your diesel F one fifties or your gas F one fifties that run you this mm-hmm. much a year to, to run and operate. And, and that's definitely going to sell a lot of people. So when it comes to competitors, um, who do you think this competes against besides the obvious? <laughs> well, the obvious, I think, I think Tesla is always the benchmark when it comes to EVs. They've just been in the game for so long. They're a very established player at this point. Um, and I think, I'm not sure when the Cybertruck is actually sp- supposed to start shipping. I think they, they were aiming for the fall okay. of this year. Yeah. yeah. 
So I we'll see because so. we really haven't heard many updates since the reveal mm-hmm. and Brandon and I were just chatting before this. Like we really don't know a lot of like specific details about the Cybertruck. We know the price, we know the towing capability, and we know the range. But after that, it's kind of it. <laughs> we just kind yeah. of are assuming <laughs> it's going to be similar to the other Teslas. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's, that'll be interesting to see how they actually match up when they're out on the road together. I, you know, I'm curious to know if now that like Ford unveiled all this information on like the F-150 Lightning and just like how capable it is, I wonder if Tesla is going to go back to like the drawing boards and try to add some last minute features into the the Cybertruck. I think you're, you're definitely right. The, uh, as the saying goes, uh, competition, when there's a lot of competition, consumers win. So companies mm-hmm. are going to compete exactly. to make a better product and we're we're end up going to be able to drive better vehicles because of companies competing so um, oh yeah yeah I definitely down for. <laughs> definitely yeah definitely welcome like any competition to any evs because it's ultimately going to make them better so i'm mm-hmm. i'm definitely excited to see i hope tesla releases some new information on the Cybertruck. i feel like it's been kind of pushed to the side with everything else they've been doing um mm-hmm. so yeah i would love to get some more information from tesla Hopefully they're able to do some vehicle to home type thing as well, especially because they've got their whole energy energy sector yeah. with, with yeah. Powerwall and solar and all this other stuff. You feel like it'd be a natural yeah. thing for them to do. but Yeah, I, I have a feeling that if they are going to come after like the Lightning and like some of these other electric pickup trucks that are coming out, I have a feeling Tesla is going to have to put something like that in. Yeah. Especially if you have this capability and like the safety features mm-hmm. of the F-150 Lightning. And and the one thing I, I do want to mention is that Ford has stake in uh, Rivian. True. So I'm wondering how much of this technology from the Lightning will be translated into Rivian's vehicles. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe um, they're using the same batteries, which I just realized because Ford is using these pouch style cells, whereas the Rivian, I think, is using the cylindrical cells, like this, the mm-hmm. standard rolled rolled cells. I, I do know the, the Rivian, we're going to see more than 300 miles on a full yeah. charge, so I'm not sure they use the same architecture. Um, which actually I'm kind of surprised that um, Ford didn't tap into that. Maybe in the future they will. Yeah. As with any EV, obviously charging is a big question mark. So here's at least what they've given for the for the extended range, kind of like fastest charging times, I guess. So level three DC fast charging does a max of 150 kilowatts, which I'm a little bit disappointed with because I know Electrify America can do a lot faster. Um, yeah. And that might have something to do with the type of cells they're using. I don't know what those pouch style cells can actually handle. Um, but either way, it's they're quoting 15 to 80 percent in about 41 minutes. So in about 10 minutes, you're going to add about 54 miles of range. So not Which honestly, too not bad. too bad. Um, they and a lot of their marking material, they're saying in 45 minutes which is about the span of a typical lunch break you're essentially going to be able to fill up the majority of your your battery so i think that's i think that's all you really need especially if you're just doing like jobs around town yeah you know i i will say that's a great um comparison you know like for fleet and commercial vehicles in the time of your lunch break you'll have a fully charged car at least an 80 percent charge car to, to continue your day yeah and then for um, home charging, they're doing a standard uh, dual dual inverter charger. So it'll standard, it'll be able to do 80 amp charging, which is um, about double of what you typically see on other EVs. So I know my car only goes up to about 32 amps max, I think, on level mm-hmm. two. I'm not sure what, or maybe 48. Yeah, it's 48 max. I don't know what yours does. 32. 32, okay. So around <laughs> yeah. there. Still yep. pretty similar, but yeah, the, yeah, with this Ford Station Pro, they're going to do standard 80 amp charging. So like essentially twice as fast as, as your typical yeah. home charger. And they're yeah. quoting around eight hours for 15 to 100% charging. Which so in, I think that's rated. Oh, good. Sorry. Alex. I was going to say in one hour, that's about 30 miles of added range on those on your home charger. I think what impresses me a lot um about the 80 amp charger is that the car can charge at 19 kilowatts 
Yeah. Um, which is pretty much a quarter of how fast my bolt can charge at a DC fast charger. <laughs> that's a good so, point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So to like have that at your house, that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. So with the F-150 Lightning, they're also targeting an estimated range with the standard range battery, um, which we don't actually know the size of the battery, um, but they're estimating about 230 miles. Um, and then they're offering an optional extended range battery with a targeted estimated range of 300 miles. Um, they did release the price of the standard range versus the extended range, and it's actually about $10,000 more to go with the extended range battery okay. pack. I feel like that's yeah. pretty typical. Yeah, which is not too bad. I mean, it's still the car qualifies for the tax credit, so that's that's the huge thing. I think that'll that'll eat up some of the Cybertruck uh, Cybertruck orders or pre orders or whatever else. People realize it's going to end up being cheaper to go with the the Lightning because they're eligible for that tax credit. Mm-hmm. Another thing too with the tax credit, I believe the Lightning is cheaper than the gas trim, like a, equivalent mm-hmm. gas trims of the yeah. F one fifty, which is incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it actually falls in line with the uh, the Ford Ranger after the tax credit. So okay. like you can get an F one fifty at the price of a, yeah. a smaller <laughs> truck, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And one thing that actually surprised me too is that. Um, the typical F-150, like at least like the commercial one, yeah. um, offers a standard rear-wheel drive. Um, but mm-hmm. the electric one is standard all-wheel drive um, yeah. across the board, which is which is nice. I found that welcome as well because the – obviously comparing to Tesla because that's, that's what I know the most about. Um, most of their vehicles, the standard range version is a rear-wheel drive, so I'm glad they – glad they kept it standard across the board there so so uh both alex and i we have reservations in for the f-150 lightning yeah and um my husband spent some time in the south he lived in tennessee for a bit so every now and then a southern accent comes out and i always <laughs> joke with him now that we put the reservation in that we have to give yeehaws because we have to like get into the mentality we're truck owners <laughs> So anytime that we eat something like delicious, I go, how many yeehaws is that? And if he like gives me a, like an eight out of 10, he has to say yeehaw eight times in oh different like ways. <laughs> and awesome. I always do it when he's not expecting it. So like the other day we were getting ice cream and I'm like, how many yeehaws is it? And he's like, oh, it's about a nine. And I'm like, you got to say it <laughs> nine times. That's funny. <laughs> so we're getting into that, you know, that, you know, <laughs> mindset instead of being a truck owner. <laughs> That's awesome. Not that I'm saying all truck owners are like that. <laughs> yeah, so we've both got reservations in. Um, you said you're planning on replacing your Bolt with this, right? Is that can, the, can, the tentative plan or you're considering it, I guess? Yeah, yeah, considering. I, I'm still very torn. I really like the Mach-E. Um, and to be honest, I feel like that might be the route that will go. Yeah. Um, but it would be nice to have something to tow uh, the race car with. True. So. Yeah, yeah. What about what about you? Which uh, trim do you think you'll get, you guys will go with? Yeah, so I know my fiance now has been uh, yeah. been looking for a truck to replace her current SUV, um, which we're basically just waiting for that SUV to die before we to buy a new truck. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but she's always she's always wanted a truck um, for her car. And I think it's, it is nice having, like, I've got the Model 3, which has, like, zero space in it. Like, we can't fit anything in there of any you can sleep in size. It, though. So, <laughs> yeah. you can sleep in it, I've found out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I think it'll be nice having a bigger, a bigger vehicle as well. And she likes bigger vehicles and sitting up high and all that kind of stuff. So, she obviously was not a fan of the Cybertruck being a more, uh, she likes the more traditional looking trucks. Um, the Rivian still was a little bit too out there for her. Um, she really likes the look of just the normal F-150. So when we saw, when we saw that this came out, I told her I'd put a reservation in for it. So we've got our, our reservation in for it now. Um, I doubt we'll, we probably won't take delivery like right when they first come out. I think we'll definitely kind of play it safe, but it's a, it's a hundred dollars down, I think, to just put your name on yep. the list. So I figured, why not? And it's refundable too. So if we decide against it, we can get our money back. Do you do you guys have an idea which trim you might go for? Yeah, that's what I'm not sure about. I I know I would like 300 miles. I don't really see the point in getting an EV that can't go 300 miles, um, mm-hmm. especially with a lot of the driving we do. We could certainly get away with a 230 mile 
uh, car. I don't think that would be an issue, but I also like like having that extra buffer, um, especially being in a more a more Midwest climate where it gets really cold mm-hmm. and you do have some range range loss or it does get real windy and you need to drive like across <laughs> across state lines. Yeah. Um, and we also don't know how towing is going to affect this as well. So yeah, if for some reason we are towing something, if we get like a camper or something and they're towing it, like we, we don't know how that's going to affect range as well. So mm-hmm. I think going with as much range as you could afford is usually what I tell people. And that's, that's what I try to follow as well. Definitely. Yeah. I, I feel like we would probably go with the pro and then get the extended range battery pack okay. and then with the tax credit would bring it down to like about 42,000. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, so I know the, um, the thing was, it was like the, the upper trims, you get like the bigger 15 inch screen, but I kind of like the smaller one. <laughs> <laughs> to be oh, honest. I didn't realize that. So the the yeah. standard one has like a little bit smaller screen in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a. I don't know exactly how big it is, but um, I think it's maybe like about twelve point nine inches, like diagonal. So it's a good size screen still. Yeah. Um, but you know, with our experience with the Mach E, you know, driving it shortly, um, the bigger screen, the the layout, some of like the uh, climate control features are hard to use while you're driving. So yeah, they're almost too I'd far rather away. have a horizontal. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's something that software, you know, c- it could be updated, but mm-hmm. yeah, kind of like the smaller screen. Another feature I really liked was the um, how it adjusts the range based on what you're towing. I had oh, never yeah. seen that in a truck before ever. Maybe I'm just like out of the loop, but I don't. I haven't seen any other trucks that really offer that. No. So no, it's gonna have honestly, some no. smart. Uh, some smart scales, I guess, like in the bed Mm -hmm. and on the tow hitch to kind of actively know how much weight you're pulling and adjust the range numbers based on that. Yeah. Which in also too, with like route planning, it does that Mm -hmm. as well. Like it factors in all that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one thing that blew my mind with just, well, the F-150 in general, just how, um, how much innovation Ford has put into it. Um, I could definitely see why this is the number one selling vehicle in America. It's yeah. very impressive. They definitely know um, their consumers think... and their customers, and I think they're trying to meet a lot of their needs. So Ford Ford is really taking a lot of their older names and turning them into um, almost like new brands underneath like the Ford umbrella. Um, Bronco is obviously one. The Mustang is one. Um, and Ford, this is where my dad joke comes in. <laughs> Uh, So for I would say lightning has struck twice because uh, Ford used to have um, performance F-150s called the lightning. Um, They actually had two versions prior to the electric one that were high output um, combustion engines Mm -hmm. that were lowered trucks that offered pure performance. Um, So I know Ford is really doing a lot of revamping of older names, um, specifically like the lightning, the Mustang Mach-E. And there's rumors that they're coming out with a Bronco electric, yeah, um, which would be super cool. Um, but to to kind of see that lightning, um, you know, like a, not character. What's the what's the name naming badge? Yeah, we'll just go with that. I okay. there's a there's a name for it, but uh, or a term for it. Um, um, but lightning. just to like to see like the lightning name and brand come so far to literally mean something electric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's really cool. It's exciting. Which I don't think we talked about uh, performance on this truck, but obviously being electric, I think they're rating around 4.4 seconds, zero to 60, four and a half seconds, yeah. which is as fast as my long range all wheel drive model three, which is pretty insane. <laughs> oh, for so. sure. <laughs> Um, I'm very impressed with that. And I think that that kind of stays true. The lightning original name too, being a performance truck. So um, I'm Mm -hmm. definitely glad they were able to repurpose that name. Another thing Ford is doing, which they've already done with the Maki. And I don't think we talked about when we discussed the Maki on the podcast, but Ford has done this interesting thing with their charging network where they're kind of almost like they're saying they're the largest public charging network in North America, which is kind of, it's not completely accurate, I don't think. <laughs> no. <laughs> They've essentially partnered with a lot of other charging networks to create this Ford Pass network. With that being said, it does seem to make things a lot easier for like 
starting charges and getting charges going and seeing stats and stuff like that across a wide range of networks. Um, I know a big complaint from both of us is we've got to either carry around a bunch of RFID cards to start chargers at a bunch of different networks, or we've got to have like eight (laughs) apps on our phone to charge at all the different stations, (laughs) which is kind of fun for us because we're like EV nuts, but I don't think... I don't think the average person like wants to worry about that or wants to have eight different accounts to use a charging station wherever they no. go. <laughs> Definitely not. I don't think most people would put up with that. <laughs> no, no. And it's it's yeah. not a smooth process at all. So Ford yeah. has created this Ford Pass network. So they've partnered with Green Lots, Electrify America, EV Connect, ChargePoint, Flow. I don't even know what Flow is. Have you used a Flow station before? Uh, FLO? I... Yeah, I've heard of them. Okay. Um, I don't know that we have any here in, in Ohio. Gotcha. Yeah. And yeah. EVgo is the last one. So a lot of the big players there, obviously Electrify America, I think is one of the bigger DC fast charging networks. ChargePoint basically owns the market in level two, I feel like. <laughs> They're everywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. So that is nice that you only need like your one Ford Pass app to get charging started at all of these different stations. So yeah. Um, Unfortunately, they're not including any free charging like some of the other vehicles coming out, but just having access to that Ford Pass app is is definitely handy. Yeah, that's one thing that I would love to try to yeah. see just how seamless it is to start a charge on all those different networks. And I think we did try, didn't we? I, I can't remember when we discussed it. We both tried to download oh. like the Ford Pass app, but you yeah. need like a Ford vehicle to, <laughs> to use it. Yeah. You can't like start a charge for your Tesla or your Bolt. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait to record a video on that when we get our lightnings. There right? you go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so to um, actually, I don't know if you want to end the podcast with this, but I thought this would be funny if you if you thought of this before. Um, so I know we just put it like our reservations for the lightning fairly recently. Have you thought of any custom plates that you want to do for it? Ooh, that's a good one. I like. I wanted to keep it simple with like all of my cars. If I end up like owning multiple cars, this would be Mallory's car too. So it'd probably be up to her and she doesn't, oh. she's not like a huge fan of custom plates. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. I kind of want to do something with yeehaw, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like yeehaw EV or something like that. <laughs> yeah. You can't say, I, I was going to say, you could say like yeehaw, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but that seems too, that seems too much. Or just ye, like Y with a bunch of E's after it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how about, could you do runs on ye instead of runs oh. on E? <laughs> yeah. yeah <you're> good. <laughs> I don't know if that's too, that's probably too big for a license plate, but. Yeah. I probably want to do like yeet, huh? Like. <laughs> <laughs> So we would love to hear from you guys in your opinion and thought on the F-150 Lightning. If you want to hit us up, check out our social media accounts at Twitter at livingelectric underscore. We can also be found on Instagram at Living Electric Podcast, as well as Facebook at Living Electric Podcast. We look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks again. And we'll see you in the next episode.